お嬢様。Hello, my lords and ladies, Joe here. And with the festive spirit of All Saints Wake in the air, I'm going to talk to you today about glamour. But Joe, aren't you a trial player? What could you possibly know about glamour? Well, as always, I'm going to give you a unique perspective on glam. While everyone else is off chasing the newest raid gear or spending boatloads on the market board for the latest level one crafted glam set, there are some early level hidden gems that easily get passed over. Plus, there are things about glam that are pliable at any level. So, if you're just starting out and want to get some good looking stuff early on, or you're just a glam enthusiast, pop open that dresser because I've got showcases, tips, and resources for you. But before we get into all the fabulous glam, I've got a challenge for you. If you like any of these glamours, please leave a like and a sub. And if you don't like any of them, well, be absolutely glamorous and leave a like and a sub anyway. I'm going to use these glamours as a platform to jump off and give you some tips and resources. Starting off with my Winged Knight Paladin. As this glamour takes full advantage of dyes, let's talk about them. There are what I like to refer to as four tiers of dyes. The first tier are the easiest to obtain. While some can be gotten through Heaven's Ward dungeons or quest rewards, the easiest and most reliable way is to purchase them through the dye vendors who are located in the capital cities or the firmament. Then there are the tier two dyes which are either obtained through the A Realm Reborn Beast Tribe vendors or crafting them through any level 30 Disciple of Hand class, with some overlap between the two. You can also obtain some of these through Heaven's Ward Dungeons or through Quest Rewards. The third tier are available through the Firmament or through Island Sanctuaries, but since that is not early game, we won't be focusing in on that. They can be purchased with Sky Builder scripts, but some may also be purchased with Fate Tokens. If Fate Tokens are an option, I highly recommend you choose that, as that leads us to our fourth tier, the General Purpose Dies. These dies are the in-game equivalent to the dies you can buy in the cash shop. There are many ways to attempt to get these dies, but in terms of the early game, your options are either Fate Prizes, Silver or Gold Horde Sacks from the Palace of the Dead, or Venture Coffers from Quick Exploration Ventures through your retainer. And while we're on the subject of dyes, a tip I can give you is that if you want to use the same equipment for a different glamour and you want to use it in another color, you can dye items directly on the plates and it won't affect any other glamour you may have. Next showcase is my feathered healing glam. I also made a Black Mage casting version of this. Considering that the healing and casting glams are very similar, let's talk about a very useful tool to help you find the right equipment for your glamour. Let's say you see an equipment piece that you want to use for your glamour, but you would like it in another color. Perhaps you're hoping you'll be able to find something similar, but for a different class. Or maybe you would like to see if there is a similar piece of equipment that has a slightly different design. An excellent resource for this would be the Garland Data section of Garland Tools. By looking up any equipment piece, you can then look at the Shared Model tab to see all the available options. This is especially useful for a Realm Reborn equipment, as many ARR equipment have significant design differences between what would be considered a shared model. 
Also, every glam displayed so far has utilized one of the greatest sources for glamour in Final Fantasy XIV, PvP. No PvP equipment exceeds level 60, so once you hit level 30, unlock PvP and check out all the vendors in the Wolf's Den, because there is a lot to go through. And depending on when you are seeing this, you might want to prioritize gear being sold by the disreputable priest, which is selling the Garo gear, which at some point will most likely go away, possibly forever. Also, this dead horse looks like it could use a beating, because it has been nearly two years since trial players have been kicked out of PvP with the promise of being allowed to return. At this point, I wouldn't hold your breath, but if you are a trial player, there's no harm in going down to the wolf's den and checking things out. That way, when you do sub, you'll know exactly what to work towards. Next is a glam I made for a squadron member. Unfortunately, this model is a Marauder, but for you warriors, I recommend the Potashoe dyed charcoal gray. Most of these items can be purchased through vendors. There are actually dedicated glamour vendors in the early game. For those, check out my video in the corner. Moving on to my self-insert character with my self-insert glamour. I got some of these pieces from the Firmament. Now I've mentioned the Firmament before as a place to get rare dyes, but it also has many popular glamour items, some of which you can buy with Skybuilder scripts or Fate tokens, and others you need to win through the Coupo of Fortune. Next is my Monk's Void Fire Fist Glam. Some of these items are quest rewards. For side quests that give glamour items, make sure to check out my side quests worth doing playlist. Next is my 12 Executioner's Glam. This glam was partially inspired by the NPC Iliad, which brings me to a great glamour resource, Gamer Escape. While just being a general excellent Final Fantasy XIV resource, when it comes to glamour, you can look up any equipment piece and it will give a picture. But as it pertains to this glam, if you see an NPC and you would like to use what they are wearing in your glamours, simply look them up, then click the Appearance tab to get all the information you need. Next, it wouldn't be much of a glam video without some cosplays. First is my Heiwa Jima Shizuo from Dudarara Warrior Cosplay. This cosplay has the hardest to acquire item in the whole video, and to talk about it, we need to talk about treasure maps. Now, the Aquapolis Treasure Dungeon has plenty of glamour items and materials needed to craft them. You can also attempt to get them through the gacha style rewards in the first section of the Palace of the Dead, but the truly difficult items to attain come from the unhidden leather maps. These maps are rare rewards from treasure chests from other treasure maps in A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward. What's more, even if you're lucky enough to get an unhidden leather map, the glamour items and crafting materials are rare rewards of those chests. So they are rare on top of rare. 
To get the two polarized glass required to craft the shaded spectacles took me a very long time. This might be the one circumstance where I recommend if you want to get an item from an unhidden leather map, you may just want to buy it off the market board rather than going to the headache of getting it yourself. Also, as this glam can only be worn by a member of the Maelstorm, that leads me to another glam source. Your Grand Company and their respective Hunt Bill Masters have unique equipment themed around the Grand Companies, so it's definitely worth a look. But be warned, if you switch Grand Companies, you will no longer be able to wear this equipment, even if you have it attached to a glamour plate. Next is my Ronald Knox from Kuro Sichuchi Ninja Cosplay. This glam features items from the cash shop. Yes, there are plenty items to be had if you are willing to fork over some real world money. Now for some of you, purchasing glams is pure heresy. But if you can't resist the allure, here are some ways you can save some money. If you see an item that you like and it has this message saying it was available during a past in-game event, when that same event occurs again, it will go on sale. If it does not have this message, it still has a chance to go on sale, but it is far harder to predict when these sales occur. What I have noticed is that these sales occur in correlation to real-world events involving the game. Things like a new data center opening, or the Final Fantasy Anniversary, have all had a corresponding cash shop sale. So just wait it out if there's something you really want. Now let's get to the part all you degenerates crave. Sexy glams. But Joe, you say? You only play male characters. What would you know about sexy glams? Well, my flustered friend, let me introduce you to my harem squadron. My all-female squad waifus that I can play dress up with. I have my Ara, my Makote, my Lala. Uh-oh. Um, as I was saying, this is where I can come up with my sexy glamours. This entire outfit, sans the weapon, is purchasable at the Golden Saucer, another great resource for glams. From Playboy bunny outfits to NPC garb and weapons to pig costumes, you should definitely check it out. As we check out these next two glams, I think it's important to mention dungeons. Now most of the early game dungeons get passed over as a glam resource. And while they're definitely not up to the exceedingly high standards of the more recent expansion dungeons, there are still some hidden gems that you might want to check out. Dungeons I recommend are the Sunken Temple of Corn, Desmael Darkhold, The Vault, Pharaoh's Serious Hard, just to name a few. But there are even items in the very first dungeon that I think are worth a look. If you want to get a quick, easy bathing suit, there is the Uncanny Knickknacks vendor in Mordona. But while we're on that subject, Endgame Cities have a vendor where you can purchase glamour items for special currencies. So make sure to check out what items you may want and how to get the currencies to purchase them. And finally, as we go over this last swimsuit, there is one more glamour resource that may surprise you, fishing. Yes, by catching some particular rare fish, they can be desynthesized into glamour swimsuits or materials needed to make swimwear. So break out your rod if you want to have some fun at the beach. Here is a list of all the fish that can be desynthesized into glamour items or crafting materials for glamour items. And as I close out, I'd like to give some other online resources that people can use for their glams. First is the Eorzea Collection. Recently, they have really upped their game and have become an excellent source for gear sets if you want to have a quick view of the glams out there. If video showcases are more your thing, I recommend the channels Bad Wolfie and M Channel M Chan. There you go. Early game glams and the resources you can use to look just as good. Did you like any of the glams shown here today? Learn anything new about where to get your glams? Going to use any early game stuff in your glamour? Or do you have any tips for low-level glams? Let me know in the comments below. 
Now I know you must have liked at least one of these glams, so make sure to leave a like and it would be super fashionable for you to leave a sub as well. Keep your glams glamorous and I'll see you in the world of tomorrow.